question is what is for loop so basically it is a loop which is used to repeatedly execute a specific block of code for known numbers of time this is the for loop let me give you an example just imagine there are a 60 student in a class and you need to find the less attendance students from the class so for that you know that there are 60 students so for 60 times you need to run this loop with your some specific logic right so in that case you can use the for loop so the basically when the numbers of repetition is clear to us we use for loop what if the numbers of repetition is not clear to us for that time we use while loop or some other loops if you want to learn while loop and some another loop in matlab we are going to explain those things in our upcoming videos in the syntax of for loop the first word is for then we are defining a variable which is nothing but the length of for loop in that we generally take i as a variable and over here you can see a gem s gem b a represents the initial value b represents the final value whereas s represents the step size then after a statement of logic and then finally end so this is the syntax of for loop let me elaborate these things for you so we'll write for loop here i is the variable where 0 is the initial value 10 is the final value so if you want to approach from 0 to 10 there are 9 steps right but what we are defining in our for loop that the step size is 2 that means our for loop will jump from 0 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 6 6 to 8 and then 10 so this is what the step size means now we'll go for the statement here our statement is m is equal to 2i plus 3 so for every value of i it will calculate m and then end so this is how we are going to write syntax of for loop now let us write this code in matlab and understand what's happening inside the code line by line so here our code is ready and now let's run and over here and over here you can see the different values of m so for each value of i it calculates different value of m now let us understand what is happening inside the code so when we run the code it will start reading the code from the first line first letter so when the first three letter is 4 it understands that we are going to implement for loop then it will go for the variable it will understand the initial value final value and step size and then it will move for the statement so when it reaches to the statement it will read that 2 into i plus 1 so initial value of i is 0 so 2 into 0 is 0 plus 1 so ultimately the value of m is 1 and it represents m is equal to 1 then again it will go back now this time it will have a step size of 2 so instead of 0 there will be increment of 2 and it will jump to 2 it will come down the value of i is 2 now so 2 into 2 is 4 plus 1 5 so the m is 5 and this will keeps on moving until it reaches 10 when it reaches 10 it still satisfies the condition and then it will come down 10 into 2 20 plus 1 21 so we have the value of m as 21 and again it will go up when this time it will go up it will again check the condition whether the value of i is within the band limit in this condition the value of i will be 12 because we have given the step size of 2 so the previous one 
was 10 so now it will be 12 and it will see it is not in the range the initial value is 0 the final value is 10 so it is out of the range out of the given range so it will directly jump to the end section of the loop and this is how this for loop works now we'll go for nested for loop that means a for loop inside a for loop so for that uh, let us take two variables let's call one as m and we'll go for one gem five so from one to five and another variable we'll name it as n and uh, let's say we'll go for one two three so first loop will be having variable i and which starts with one and the first loop we want to go for the length of m so here we'll write the command length of n and then again there is a for loop because we want to create a matrix of m cross n right so we are writing the another loop and the variable is j which is equal to one gem length of n right and now we'll write our logic uh, for example the variable name uh, the matrix variable name i want to name it as a and then we'll write i comma j why i comma j that i'll tell you when i explain this thing and then uh, my logic is m plus n so m of i plus n of j that's it and i will end the first loop in the end another loop now i'll simply run and here you can see <clears throat> this is the final result of my a matrix which is m cross n m 1 to 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 5 rows and 3 columns so 5 rows by 3 columns matrix is ready using nested for loop now let us understand the line by line command of this nested loop so when we run the code it will start with line number 1 so here the line is m is equal to 1 gem 5 so it will print m from 1 to 5 the next line is n is 1 gem 3 that means it represents n is equal to 1 to 3 now here it will jump into the loop number 1 where i is equal to 1 gem length of m length of m is 1 to 5 right so initial value of i is 1 remember initial value of i is 1 then it will jump to line number 4 it will again a for loop j is equal to 1 gem length of n length of n is 1 gem 3 so initial value of j is 1 now it's jump to line number 5 a is equal to i comma j i is 1 j is 1 so a of 1 comma 1 so a will become a matrix and 1 comma 1 that means the element of that matrix is 1 comma 1 which is equal to m of i plus n of j so i m of 1 is 1 plus n of 1 is 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 so a is equal to 2 from line number 5 again it will jump to line number 4 now the value of j is 2 i is still 1 remember i is still 1 but the value of j is 2 so a of 1 comma 2 so now the element number 2 row number 1 column number 2 m of i i is 1 n of j j is 2 so the first element of m is 1 and the second element of n is 2 over here you can see the second element of n is 2 so 2 plus 1 becomes 3 so over here the value of a is 3 now again it will jump to line number 4 <clears throat> how many times it will jump to line number 4 it will jump to line number 4 equal to the length of n 
the length of n is 3 so it will jump to j for 3 times and it is the third time so for that j is 3 now so a is 1 comma 3 which is equal to m of i i is 1 n of j j is 3 so n of 3 is 3 so m is 1 n is 3 3 plus 1 4 so here you can see 4 so at the end of j loop we got all the three columns now it is the end of loop number j which is inside the loop number i and then again it will jump to line number 3 over here i will have the increment of 1 now when i has increment of 1 then i becomes 2 it will jump to line number 4 all the process will repeat again but when it comes to line number 5 a is 2 comma 1 so here the value of i is 2 and j is 1 and you can see we are having this matrix like earlier again it will rotate j loop for 3 times and it will jump back to line number 3 again it will have an increment of 1 and then jump to line number 4 so this process will keeps on continue until the final matrix is being prepared so here we have the final matrix so this is how using nested for loop you can create this type of matrix there are other tutorial videos are available on matlab you can check out those videos and the link you can see on the screen and if you want to learn the while loop then the link is here on the screen so until we meet again in our next video till the time bye bye